Okay, yet another project. Uh, this time it's upside down because I'm trying out my new uh, camera mag mount. So, my brother requested a firing pin tool for a, a Lee Enfield uh, rifle. Uh, apparently the firing pin's down some little tube in the bolt. You need a special tool to get it out, to clean, and adjust it. So, went on to the internet, the wonderful thing it is, and found a pretty simple set of plans. And I was like, oh, why build one of those when I, or buy one of those when I can just build it? So, that is the project for today. It's basically a tube that's, or a piece of steel that's drilled out, a handle through it, and a couple little tabs uh, formed in it. So, to start with, I just have some 3 ace uh, cold rolled steel here that I'm going to use for the body. Um, to start with, I'm just going to drill this sucker out and get that part of the work done. Get my saddle out of the way here. So the center drill is quarter inch, and I'm going to do that in a couple steps. So I'll need a quarter, and we'll do that guy. And I'll need a center drill. Okay, to start with here, I'm going to center drill it, then go in with this guy, and then go in with the quarter, which is the finished side. Um, I don't think there's any reason to ream it, as this is just a clearance hole to clear the firing pin. And here we go. Okay, so it's all drilled, and so now I got a howl steel tube. And next up, I need to make it about two inches long. Cut it off. Um, yep, that looks good. Before I cut it off, I'm going to quick sand the outside just to make it look pretty. I'm just going to use a chunk of 320 grit, I think this is. Mostly just because I'm lazy. And then I don't have to do this later. I think I'm going to hit that with, uh, what I got here, some 400. So now I'm moving up to 400 just to clean it up a little bit more. Yeah, I like that finish. Now this is not a critical dimension, so I'm just going to mark it using some uh, Sharpie as marking fluid and a 
pair of calipers. We should have pulled this out a little bit further, but this will work. like I can. Okay. So I'm totally just meatball eyeballing this. And I'm going to cart it off just on the inside of that one. Again, I don't think about any of this is a critical dimension other than maybe the little lugs that are used to engage the bullet. You can see that, but the my drill depth was basically almost dead on. Not bad. Time to clean up the end. And there's the body of the tool. So we're three eighths on the outside, quarter inch on the inside, nothing too fancy. For the handle, I'm just using some three sixteenths uh, uh, steel. Uh, don't know what the finish is on, or what the material is, or the hardness. It was just some. Um, Hardware store special. I should clean up the end first. So if I make that two inches as well. Two inches, inch and a half. So I'm making my cross handle inch and a half. Just like last time, I'm going to sand it quick just so I don't have to do it later. So that's where I need to cut it off. And there's the handle. Nothing impressive. Okay, now I'm getting set up to cut the top of the tool here. Uh, basically, I make a pair of nubs that engage with the back of the firing pin assembly. And to do that, I got my spacer on here and some V-blocks. I'm just going to clamp the V-blocks down like so. There's a one, two, three block. One, two, three block that is the bottom support. Set this guy in here just like so. And 
and that will hopefully be enough to hold that guy in place while I make the couple little cuts I need to. Okay, that's done. I'm going to use a 1 and 13 32nd cutter, or a, a 13 32nd cutter, uh, just because I have a lot of them. Apparently I like making my math hard. And the little tab needs to be 160 thousandths. So half of that would be 80. So I need to come over 0.283 on either side and then make my cut. Start with the back. 283. So there is 283. Lock my uh, cross slide real quick. Lock this guy. Thousands. Let's first go around. 30, 40, 50 ish. Lock that. Speed a little bit. Next cut, so 50. Unlock the cross side. If I didn't screw up, this should be 160. And we're sitting at 160. So that part is done. And there you have the little tangs that need to be cleaned up yet. Okay, I think that should be in there good enough. Time, I'm going to try and find the center. Ooh. Okay, in theory, I'm in the center of that part now. Ah, poop.
Okay, this time I hopefully won't interfere with my clamps. And I'm just going to eyeball it. So my handle here measures 183 and I want to press fit it into this part. This is a 182 drill and then I have a set of over under reamers that I'll go through the part after this to make one hole slightly under, one hole slightly over and then use my press to press it in. Or at least that is the plan. not. Okay, so I have my body and the handle and I just marked the center. As you can see this hole doesn't fit and this hole is a loose fit. Um, I did screw up and I forgot to align the tangs to the armhole or to the I forgot to align the tangs vertical before I drilled the hole for the handle, but it should still work as is, so not too concerned. Now I'm just going to press the handle in. Um, I put a little mark on it so I can see when it's hit center, and once that hits mark hits center, I should hopefully stop and the handle will be done. right about there center. And then there's the handle. Let's see how close I got it. Oh, just a smidgen more. There we go. So that's all done. Um, I picked up some gun bluing, and I'm going to try bluing this guy and see how that works out. Okay, so now I'm going to blue the part. Um, since I already pre-sanded that and the surface finish is pretty good, all I need to do is degrease it, and then dump it in the bluing, and it should be good to go. To degrease it, I'm just using acetone and some clean paper towels. I'm also wearing gloves, one to protect me from the chemicals, and two to protect the part from my oil, or the oils on my hands. So, I just have a paper towel here saturated in acetone, and as you can see it's taking off the remnants of the oil and also all the Sharpie, so that won't uh, interfere with the process. Um, Sharpie is a very good resist. Uh, if you're making printed circuit boards, you can write on them with a Sharpie, dump them in the acid, and wherever you wrote on with the Sharpie will s still be copper. Everywhere else, all the copper will be eaten away. I probably should have marked... Oh, nope, I got it. I was about to say, I probably should have marked the, the handle with a mechanical divot or something instead of Sharpie, because it's kind of hard to get down in between to get the Sharpie off but I was able to get the paper towel in there and finish that up. So Basically all I'm doing here is going over this until the uh, paper towel comes out clean. Or I die from the fumes, one of the two.
think that's good enough. I'm going to take the dry side and just wipe everything down. For the bluing, I just got some super blue, just threw it in a little container. Let me wipe that guy out quick. So, got a little clean plastic container, and then the super blue. I nearly forgot to clean the inside. Um, as seeing how that's probably where most of the oil is. Also, I won't be able to get down in there to. Ugh. Yeah, that's where all the oil is. I won't be able to get down in there to keep this clean and oiled. So. Of all the surfaces, this is probably the most important one to get the chemical bluing down into and the treating. If I was smart, I would have cleaned the inside before I put the handle in, because then I could just run rags, sort of like gun patches down through it. Clean that out. And now I'm just going to dump the bluing into this container with the part and sort of slosh it around and get everything to coat completely. Wow, that was quick. So, as you can see, it just turned black. And you can also see where I missed cleaning. That actually is a pretty complete finish. I'm going to go rinse this off real quick and see what it looks like. Actually, looks not too bad. Am I going to want to do it again? I don't think so. Save this for the next time. I got parts to do. And here's what it looks like after I'm done bluing it. For my first try at bluing, not too bad. Um, where I screwed up, when I poured the bluing in, I dumped it right on it, so the center part blued before everything else. I think that's where some of this wafty came from. Also, I think I dilute the bluing a little bit so it doesn't react quite as fast, because this went black almost immediately. Uh, all that's left now is to oil this thing up, and it's ready to go to its new home. There you have it. Laters.